Hello everybody. Let's talk about the fracture of metals. So let's begin. Fracture is the separation of a solid under stress into two or more parts. In general, matter fracture can be classified as ductile or brittle, but a fracture can also be a mixture of the two. The ductile fracture of a metal occurs after extensive plastic deformation and is characterized by slow crack propagation. Brittle fracture, in contrast, usually proceeds along characteristic crystallographic planes called cleavage planes and has rapid crack propagation. And let's talk about ductile fracture. Ductile fracture of a metal occurs after extensive plastic deformation. For simplicity, consider the ductile fracture of a round tensile specimen. If a stress is applied to the specimen that exceeds its ultimate tensile strength and is sustained long enough, the specimen will fracture. Three distinct stages of ductile fracture can be recognized. And first one is the specimen forms a neck and cavities from within the neck region. Second one, the cavities in the neck coalesce into a crack into the center of the specimen and propagates toward the surface of the specimen in a direction perpendicular to the applied stress when the crack nears the surface. The direction of the crack changes 45 degree to the tensile axis and a cup and cone fracture results. And check this figure. So there are the two ductor failures and the other portion of the failures. And this is a propagation of ductor failure. So this is a specimen and in these two directions the force is applied. And when force is applied, then the fracture or a little void is originated at the center and then the void increases in size and then the void propagates in both directions and finally the material fails. And this is the microstructure of the failure surface or crack surface. And this is the magnified image during the propagation of crack. Now let's talk about brittle fracture. Many metals and alloys fracture in a brittle manner with very little plastic deformation. Brittle fracture usually proceeds along specific crystallographic planes called cleavage planes under a stress normal to the cleavage plane. Many metals crystal with the ACP crystal structure commonly show brittle fracture because of their limited number of slip planes. A zinc single, for example, under a high stress normal to the planes, will fracture in a brittle manner. Many BCC metals such as alpha iron, molybde molybdenum, and tungsten also fracture in a brittle manner at low temperature and high strain rates. Most brittle fractures in a polycrystalline metals are transgranular. That is, the cracks propagate across the matrix of the grains. However, brittle fracture can occur in an intergranular manner if the grain boundaries contain a brittle film or if the grain boundary region has been embrittled by the segregation of detrimental elements. Brittle fracture in metals is believed to take place in three stages. First one is plastic deformation concentrates dislocations along slip planes at obstacles. Second one is shear stress build up in planes where dislocations are blocked and as a result micro cracks are nucleated. Third one Further stress propagates the micro cracks and stored elastic strain energy may also contribute to the propagation of the cracks. 
low temperature and high strain rates favor brittle fracture. Also, a triaxial state of stress such as exists at a notch can contribute to brittle fracture. And this is this is actually the mic uh, micro micro picture or micrographic picture of a failure. Now let's talk about toughness and impact testing. Toughness is a measure of the amount of energy a material can absorb before fracture. It becomes of engineering importance when the ability of a material to stand an impact load without fracturing is considered. One of the simple methods of measuring toughness is to use an impact testing apparatus. One method of using this apparatus is to place a charpy venous specimen across parallel jaws in the machine. In the impact test, a heavy pendulum released from a known height strikes the sample on its downward swing, fracturing it. By knowing the mass of the pendulum and the difference between its initial and final heights, the energy absorbed by the fracture can be measured. And this is a specimen and the material for testing is skipped here and this is the pendulum and this is the scale and there is pointer here and this pendulum or hammer is released from here and this hammer or pendulum strike this one and it breaks and this is the end of swing and there is another figure so actually this specimen is shown here this is specimen and this hammer is actually this one so this one strikes here and this one breaks and this is the graph so horizontally there is temperature and vertically there is energy absorbed so more energy absorbed means more ductile and less energy absorbed means more brittle so fcc metals are more ductile and bcc for black one this one is actually uh, at low temperature it is brittle and high temperature it is ductile and this is for high steel high strength alloys and these are actually brittle material this impact test can be used to determine the temperature range for the transition from ductile to brittle behavior for metals and alloys at the temperature is lowered the carbon content of any steels affects this transition temperature range Low carbon annual steels have a lower temperature transition range and a narrow one than high carbon steels. Also, as the carbon content of the annual steels is increased, the steels become more brittle and less energy is absorbed on impact during fracture. And there is another figure. So this is the temperature in Fahrenheit and this one is the temperature in degrees Celsius and this one is the energy absorbed. And for different materials, the behavior is given here. And now let's talk about fatigue of metals. In many types of service applications, metal parts subjected to repetitive or cyclic stresses will fail at a much lower stress than that which the part can withstand under the application of a single static stress. These failures that occurs under repeated or cyclic stressing are called fatigue failures. Example of machine parts in which fatigue failures are common are moving parts such as shafts, connecting rods and gears. Some estimates of failures in machines attribute about 80% to the direct action of fatigue failures. And there is a micrograph of fatigue failure. And this is specimen for fatigue testing. Actually, this is the apparatus for testing the fatigue. And this is the uh, revolution counter and this is the motor. And from this motor, the force is applied through this one and this is specimen. So at this specimen, force is applied by repeated continuous force is applied. And it is, by, it is actually X in a cyclic way. And after some time, this specimen, the, the specimen actually, the specimen fails at this position. A fatigue failure usually originates at a point of stress concentration 
such as a sharp corner or notch or at a point metallurgical inclusion or flaw. Once nucleated, the crack propagates across the part under the cyclic or repetitive stresses. During this stage of the fatigue process, clamshell or beach mark is created. Finally, the remaining section becomes so small that it can no longer support the load and complete fracture occurs. Thus, there are usually two distinct types of surface areas that can be recognized. First one is a smooth surface region due to the rubbing action between the open surface region as the crack propagates across the section. And second one is a rough surface area formed by the fracture when the load becomes too high for the remaining cross section. Now let's talk about creep of metals. When a metal or alloy is under a constant load or stress, it may undergo progressive plastic deformation over a period of time. This time dependent strain is called creep. The creep of metals and alloys is very important for some types of engineering design, particularly those operating at elevated temperatures. For example, an engineer selection and alloy for the turbine blades of a gas turbine engine must choose an alloy with a very low creep rate so that the blades can remain in service for a long period of time before having to be replaced due to their reaching the maximum allowable strain. For many engineering designs operating at elevated temperatures, the creep of materials is a limiting factor with respect to how high the operating temperature can be. And finally, thank you for being with me.